When the sun sets and humans are preparing for sleep. When the outdoor conditions are just right. Reptiles and other wildlife emerge from their hidden retreats. The seemingly quiet and sleepy outdoors suddenly comes to life. Sidewinders, red spotted toads, king snakes, gila monsters, rosy boas, and other herps suddenly appear seemingly from nowhere. Many people live in or near areas where these creatures are common, but rarely or never get to see these amazing animals in the wild. In the next few minutes, I'll share some basic tips on finding these creatures at night in the wild. Probably the easiest way of finding reptiles and amphibians, also known as herps, after dark is road cruising. Road cruising involves driving a motorized vehicle along little traveled roadways. The roads can be either dirt roads or paved roads. The herps can be found as they cross these roadways or sometimes can be found resting on the road for warmth. Paved roadways retain the warmth from the sun during the day for several hours after dark. Sometimes they can be found on these roads when the air is cool and the pavement is a convenient source of warmth. Unfortunately, although the animals get to take advantage of this warmth, that advantage quickly can turn into a disadvantage as animals are killed by oncoming cars. Although herps are less likely to bask for warmth at night on dirt roads because they don't retain heat in the same way that paved roads do, it's often easier to find a dirt road that has little traffic or that passes through the right habitat for finding herps. When selecting a road for road cruising, you wanna find a road that passes through the appropriate habitat, has little traffic, and that is legal to road cruise on. Abandoned or bypassed roads can be amazing places to road cruise if you can find them. How fast you drive along the road is an important factor. Many snakes are small or fast, and if you're driving too quickly along, along a roadway, you run the risk of either not seeing the animal go? or passing the animal and being forced to turn around. A fast moving animal can often make it off the roadway before the vehicle can be turned around. A good rule of thumb is to try road cruising at speeds from around 15 miles per hour up to about 40 miles per hour and experiment to see what works well for you. Keep in mind that you do have to be aware of legal speed limits which often do require minimum driving speeds and there are other safety considerations as well. Some roads are narrow or windy and don't allow the opportunity to safely pull over to stop and look at herps. Also, not all roads are even legal to hunt from, so be sure to check your hunting regulations or other laws beforehand. Road cruising can be very effective and is probably the easiest way to get started at finding herps in the wild in many parts of the United States. Another popular method for finding herps at night is night hiking. Night hiking involves walking or hiking at night with a bright light, typically a flashlight, along hiking trails, roads, washes, or other natural habitat. Although night hiking is more tiring, requires more preparation, and is more difficult to cover ground, it does allow you to get into much better habitat and to make much more natural observations than road cruising does. It also allows you to find smaller and more secretive herps than road cruising sometimes allows. Night hiking is usually less efficient and effective at finding herps than road cruising can be. However, once you've learned through your own observations to better understand the habits of specific kinds of herps, a night hike can be much more effective and rewarding than simply finding herps along roadways. It's a good idea to hike the area that you want to hike at night ahead of time during the day as well as see what it looks like on maps. You don't want to get lost while out night hiking and so you want to make sure that you're very familiar with the area and are properly prepared before night hiking. It's also a good idea to bring a friend or two, bring extra food and water, and to bring more than one flashlight so you have a backup light in case your primary light fails. You also need to be extra careful when night hiking that you watch where you're walking. You don't want to step on or too closely to a venomous snake or other potential harm. Walk slowly and shine your light so that you can properly see where you are going. 
When night hiking, you do have some of the same legal issues that you have when road cruising. Thankfully, there's no speed limit issues, but you do have to make sure that you're in an area where you can legally hike and also in an area where you can legally pursue herps. Keep in mind that whether you are night hiking or night driving, you still need to check with your local game and fish agency to determine if there are any licenses that would be required. In some states, you may even need a license even if you're not planning on collecting the herps that you find. Having a good light can really make a big difference in how well you can see while night hiking. Typically, people choose between either a handheld light or a headlamp. Headlamps can be very convenient because they leave both of your hands free while hiking. The light automatically illuminates where you're looking. The two main disadvantages that I've found when using a headlamp are, first, bugs that are attracted to the lights can end up swarming around your face. And the other disadvantage is that when you do find a herp, having a light on your head ends up casting shadows when you're trying to photograph herps. Handheld flashlights, while not quite as convenient, don't have these same problems. One topic that is absolutely critical to understand when looking for reptiles at night is weather and temperature. Many kinds of snakes are more likely to be active when the temperatures are between 65 and 90 degrees. Because it is colder at night than during the day, this typically means that the best times to find reptiles at night are going to be during the warmer months of the year, depending on the weather where you will be looking. If you're hunting for herps at high elevation, where the weather is cool, you may only be able to find herps at night during the hottest parts of the summer. Different types of herps are going to have different temperature preferences. For example, many species of rattlesnakes prefer warmer temperatures, while some smaller snakes will tend to prefer more mild temperatures. It's a good idea for you to take notes when herping to keep track of the temperatures when you are finding herps so that you can check for patterns and be able to discover which temperatures specific kinds of herps prefer. But temperature is not the only condition to be aware of. The weather on the night that you are hunting, and even the weather that has happened for the days and weeks prior to your reptile hunting, also can make a huge difference in your chances of finding herps. Many herps prefer to be out following a rain. Most amphibians will be active during or following a good rain. Snakes in the desert also tend to be more active following a rain, and rain during the spring and summer months can bring many species out at night. And even though some desert species may prefer arid conditions, they can be difficult to find if the weather has been very hot and dry for long periods of time without having any rain. There are so many other factors involved in finding herps that I can't cover them all in this episode. Some of these other factors to consider or to do research about are specific seasons or times of the year when a particular species are more active or are experiencing breeding cycles. Some other factors to explore are the phase of the moon, barometric pressure, and wind. There are so many things to learn that keep herping such a mystery and so interesting. Thanks for watching this video. I hope these basic tips will help you to get started finding herps at night. Please subscribe to our channel and share it with other friends who may be interested. 